Hey everyone, I felt impressed to share with you some of the deeper context of Negro spirituals because I feel like they can often be misinterpreted or generalized or sung just because. I mean, yes, there are happy and giddy spirituals like Ride On King Jesus and Witness and He's Got the Whole World in His Hands, but those just don't encompass the entire emotional palette of Negro spirituals. Because slaves were sad too, and they experienced pain, and we must not forget that. You see, slaves were viewed as property to buy or sell. They were viewed as three-fifths of a human being, and they weren't worth for much more than producing crops and doing other jobs for up to 18 hours a day. They were prohibited from learning how to read and write, and the slave masters often took sexual liberties with the female slaves. Whippings and shackles were tools often used to keep them in line, but through all this and more, the slaves had music as their haven to maintain their hope. Many of the Negro spirituals they sang portrayed their longing to escape to freedom, with secret references to the North, where slavery was mostly abolished, the Underground Railroad, a system of secret routes and houses to help slaves escape, and ultimately, heaven. So I have my melodica here. I want to play a couple of examples of Negro spirituals and then provide a deeper context for them. The first one I want to play is Didn't My Lord Deliver Daniel? So the misconception with this song is that as long as we believe in God's deliverance and proclaim it, that he will grant our heart's desires. But that's manipulation. We can't use this song to demand what we want from God. The big phrase in this song is, and why not every man? Didn't my Lord deliver Daniel? And why not every man? God may have delivered Daniel from the lion's den and the Hebrew boys from the fiery furnace, but if they had not been saved, they were still willing to take that risk and prioritize the importance of being faithful to God. In the same way, if slaves had never got to experience freedom and deliverance, they were still going to trust God and seek deliverance in a spiritual realm. The next spiritual I want to play is Sometimes I Feel Like a Motherless Child. So why does the child feel motherless? This spiritual refers to the fact that many children of slaves were taken away and sold. A long ways from home describes their longing to return to their African homeland or to their home in heaven, maybe both. When we feel neglected or alone or helpless, one person it would be natural for us to long for is our mother, right? And on George Floyd's last day of life, his cries out to his mother while pinned to the ground were undoubtedly the cries of a motherless child. The last spiritual I want to play is Nobody Knows the Trouble I've Seen.
the things we stress over today like bills and exams and what to wear and whose DMs to slide through, <laughs> just don't compare to the amount of stress and pain that the slaves went through. This song really emphasizes the indescribable anguish that was more than the average person could imagine. Nobody knows but Jesus. One, because he's Jesus and he knows everything. And two, all of the times he was tempted on earth and his ultimate journey to the cross was the best connection to what the slaves experienced. So my first takeaway to all my singers, voice majors, instrumentalists, or anyone else who has had or will have experienced performing spirituals, it's important that we perform these songs from the heart. We may not have experienced slavery directly, but we still must find a way to connect to them personally. Here's a quote from Harry T. Burley, who wrote arrangements for quite a few spirituals. He says, success in singing these folk songs is primarily dependent upon deep spiritual feeling. The voice is not nearly so important as the spirit and then rhythm, for the Negro's soul is linked with rhythm and it is an essential characteristic of most all of the folk songs. It is a serious misconception of their meaning and value to treat them as minstrel songs or to try to make them funny by a too literal attempt to imitate the manner of the Negro in singing them by swaying the body, clapping the hands, or striving to make the peculiar inflections of voice that are natural with the colored people. Their worth is weakened unless they are done impressively, for through all these songs there breathes a hope, a faith in the ultimate justice and brotherhood of man. The cadences of sorrow invariably turn to joy, and the messages ever manifest that eventually deliverance from all that hinders and oppresses the soul will come, and man, every man, will be free. And my second takeaway, like the slaves, I often resort to music to get me through hard times, and I highly recommend it. The slaves deeply desire to be free from their suffering. Blacks like me are still suffering today, but just like the slaves, we should keep our hope in God, our deliverer, and our friend.